is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Hi, I'm Martin Gramatico, talking sports with Randy Harris. Uh, in my opinion, the next name that should go up in the Tampa Bay Buccaneer Ring of Honor, that would be none other than uh, Martin Gramatica. Um, are we done with him yet? He's great. Martin Gramatica. No, he is. Was, and it was, what a great guy, too. Automatica. Yeah. You know, stories uh, that you probably haven't heard, but our audience has heard forever and ever. Um, his rookie year, he forgot to bring breakfast on Saturday. Rookies have to bring breakfast. And the rule was you couldn't have Jose make breakfast. Jose was the caterer there at One Buck. So Martin forgot they went to go tape him to the goalpost. And the greatest buccaneer of all time, Warren Sapp, said, you don't do that to our whole offense. <laughs> that is our offense. Without Martin Gramatica, uh, not good. What Great do you story. want? That's why you're story. jumping to conclusions. I just wanted to shout out Catapult, St. Pete, Amusement Park. I took my daughters last week. They want to be a part of the show. So shameless plug, but they will be... Uh, until we check it out. You will love it. I mean, even you can jump on Somebody this. that finally yes. agrees with me about you oh. is joining the show. Nice. So. I know that guy. Yeah. Well, so, he denied know. knowing you at the fights. Yeah, well, I have many names in the social media world. So, yeah, and we so, can't and we can't say a bunch of them on live on the air. I've got so, the same so beard Randy, he does. Yeah, Mike. We had uh, Chandler Riggs on the show earlier. He's going to be in uh, Tampa for the, con- for the comic convention. Uh, so is my friend Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, you know who he is? No. He's an actor. He's been in a lot of good good stuff. He was he was in uh, Full Metal Jacket. He's the guy who killed uh, at the end of the movie in the bathroom where he killed the the, sar- the drill sergeant and then killed himself. Okay. You know you don't know what I'm talking about. No. Wikipedia. I, I, honestly, I'm I'm getting sidetracked. And yeah. in today's world, I don't know if I should say this, but you're going to learn that I don't give a crap what people think. Dude, you smell good. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I can't even concentrate. You smell That's so good. That's why you got distracted. Oh, my, it is. Yeah. Seriously. Please don't sniff the guest, Mr. Biden. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about our host. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. President, please. Uh, Ryan Reber is joining us in studio. The royal one. Uh, All In is the, the name on the hat, name on the shirt. And All In is the lifestyle he's adopted. He's now 6-0 and in the BKFC. You want to see a fight? And he joins us fight? here live. You want to see a fight? Knockout Radio. Please tell me that at least some of, of your success has nothing to do with this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's got a lot, of, lot to do with some. this man. You could say some. Hey. You could say some. He, he was with me since the beginning, man, before I even turned pro. How do you get rid of him? Because we've tried. <laughs> no. no, there's no getting rid of Matt. No. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> He's, he's it's the dead. same here. He refuses to leave. <laughs> so Ryan came from the the barber world. He is a, yep. a barber shop, the uh, Royal Edge Barber Shop in St. Pete, Tampa region, and um, just like a, a mullet, you know, I'm I'm unshakable. You can't get rid of me. <laughs> like I'm not going anywhere. What's next for you? Not to get right into it, but a world title, man. That's what's next. How soon do I need to call Dave Feldman? Uh, September thirteenth. Sorry, yeah. Is that the one in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, okay. I'm headlining. That's oh. amazing. Congratulations. Title we made it, man. Baby. Who are you fighting? I'm fighting Alberto Blas. Blas. Nice. Who made short work of the champion Richardson in the last fight where he got hit so hard he actually fought the referee multiple times yeah. not knowing where he was. He didn't win that one either. Who? When he fought the ref. Richardson? Yeah. No. He lost that <laughs> one. Well, so, <laughs> so Blas is a real, a real champion. He's got the power, and we're going to match it pound for pound, and uh, the world's going to see the greatness of Ryan Reaver. Typically, I say... It's not about who you're fighting. It's about what you're bringing to the fight. How much do you go into looking and, and watching video and such of your opponent? Or is it very little? Because, like I said, it's what you're bringing, not what he's going to be doing. Absolutely. It's very little, man. i obviously seen all his fights. I study him, but I don't study him to a T because... When you get in there with somebody, Styles make fights, and because he fought him one way and fought him one way, does not mean he's going to come in there and fight me that way. So I don't get caught up too much on this, you know what I mean? Because that's what happens. When you start watching film too much, you get too caught up in here. For sure. If you get too caught up in here, man, you're already cooked. You know, a lot of times fighters, you know, will say, you know, I have a game plan. Yep. And I know you and I both, you know, say this all the time. How can you have a game plan when you don't know what you're going to do when that game plan starts? And, and it's funny because... Window. Yeah, Chris, Chris, and um, and uh, Sean Wheel like always ask me that, and my game plan is to not have a game plan. It's to you know I go by the old Bruce Lee philosophy: use no way as a way and have no limitations as limitations. So obviously there's limitations because we can't kick, we can't take down, but in the aspect of using these and using my body, there's no limitations. You know. All right, so Mike Perry fought uh, Jake Paul. 
and he, he's a great bare knuckle boxer. Do you think that there's a, a big difference between the sweet science and bare knuckle boxing? I, I wouldn't say a big difference, but there is uh, a quite significant difference because I did the same thing. You know, obviously mine was on a shorter notice and a way better opponent than Perry. But, you know, I get it because you can take a little bit more with boxing gloves and the hits are different. And I always compare it as like kind of hitting your shin bone. You know what I mean? It's that bare knuckles, that kind of pain. It's just kind of aggravating like, oh, that fucking hurt for a minute. And he then said freaking. He brother, said freaking. Freaking hurt for a minute. Sorry about that, guys. And, uh, you didn't you have know. to apologize. You said freaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I slipped my mind. So, so I mean, now, now, I know this is a loaded question, so I'm going to say it with... Um, Conviction. How about just say it? Got to say it. So, uh, <laughs> obviously, your training partner in, in, in camp and also sharing fight night with you on September 13th in Hollywood is none other than champion, the current day, the Redneck Mundell, who Perry has avoided, who will not fight the real champion, to create a whole belt title. See, he's causing no, the king crap. of violence. He's was, so causing crap. Well, hold on. The king of violence, a great friend of the show, Randy Harris and Mike Perry. We've known Mike since the UFC days. We love Mike. Now there's we. Well, but, but, but the point <laughs> is, Dave is the true champ. They created this belt outside of it, the king of violence, and didn't allow Dave to even have a chance at it. And Mike hasn't had to fight Perry for the title. So where, where do you stand on that, that argument? And, and what do you think should happen next? Um, I think after Perry took that fight, I think they should feed him to the wolves, man, like they did me. You know what I mean? Yeah. They did the same thing with me when I did the boxing match for Game Bread. They fed me to Travis, which was the most experienced guy in the division. At that point in time, I believe he was very hungry. You know, what was laid out on the table was what was laid out, which was championship fight afterwards, which I obviously didn't get, but he may have gotten it. And um, I think they should they should feed uh, Mike. We, let's see how good Mike really is. Let's see how good he really is. I didn't is. realize that was a double point because Travis is Randy's brother from Philadelphia. They yep. grew up in the same town. Outstanding and, uh, guy, yeah. yeah. So Randy, Randy. Well, and that's what they said. That's they were like, "Oh, well, Ryan wanted to go out there and look horrible, you know. Now we're gonna see what Ryan's really made out of." So we seen what Ryan was really made out of. I, you. I feel, you know. Good for you. And we, we, t we, you know, I, same thing with Bless. You know, I, I don't let it get in my mind that he's been knocking everybody out in the first round because everybody he fought isn't me. You know, it's it's gonna be you know it's gonna be different in there. So seven and zero equals world championship, but and seven is a, my number. Been a long road. Like talk about like who's behind you, the sponsors. Like what's it take to go from a dream to Reality. a world title opportunity on September thirteenth? I mean, first and foremost. Who you surround yourself with is definitely key. You know what I mean. And I've always stood by that, and I say it, and I'll say it till I'm done with it, man. I, you know, you put just That's why I surround myself with guys like Dave, guys like Julian, because those guys are winners. Those guys want to win. Those guys have goals, ambition. So when you surround yourself with those guys, you know, and then plus I got, I got, um, you know, grateful to to be a part of All In. You know, my my guy HD got me in there, and you know, the rest is history. I'm the first win for All In management. Um, you know, they've they've done nothing but you know guide me and help me and you know make life a lot easier for training camps and you know things like that and um you know my trainers at the gym you you know i got i got a very good team around me of people that all do something a little bit different whether it's mental whether it's you know you got what you got going on um i got what i got going on over that battle zone and then of course i got nick who is dave's uh, what is Dave's personal trainer? So when I seen Dave doing what Dave did, I was like, wow, man. I mean, this dude is the real deal. You know, at first I was like, eh. But then watching him, watching him move, you're like, wow. You know, he's the real deal. Who is he working with? Who is he with? And, you know, that's why I, I did that. Are we past the stage? And I, I ask Dave Feldman this all the time. You know, at the very beginning, we had to explain what bare knuckle is. And, and how many times people have said, well, I understand it's bare knuckle, but what kind of glove do you have on <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, this, it's those same things. Are we past that now? I mean, the success I, of BKFC or... I think it's still, still a little bit yeah. there, yeah. Because they... Well, how much of your knuckles do you get to tape? Listen, <laughs> there is no tape on the knuckles. <laughs> There's none. Yeah, it's... What's, what's running through your mind as you're walking to the squared circle? Um, every fight, it's been different, man. And it, and it really depends on my preparation, what I did, what happened the week of. You know, there's a lot of different variables that, that you know, account for that situation, you know. I mean, I've had fights where I've been in that back room and the 10 was like, 
man, I don't even want to be here right now. Oh, you better stop that. You know, I'm, I'm having conversations with myself. I mean, the Perez fight, and that's kind of why I feel like I was stale a little bit for the first couple of rounds, but then you kick it back in. Like, is this, is this really how you want to be remembered? Is this how you want to go out? Well, and really, you don't have time to do that. No. You know, if you're two, three rounds in and you've been in that zone. And I had seconds. Why I took that knee, why he pummeled me, I had seconds. And that's all. I f- left out all the outside noise and outside chatter, and I thought to myself, this is this is how you want to. No, get up. You get up. And I got up, and I continued to fight on, and I wore him out. And I look to do the same thing with Blyas. You know, I, he's been knocking everybody out, but who is he actually knocked out? Like Lorenzo knocked out the Marine, like that kind of knocking out. I, and it'd be a little more intimidating, you know, and, and not like, not to put anything by him. He is the real deal. Sure. And that's why I want this, because then it proves to me who's the real, real deal. You know, I go in here, and when I beat him, then, then a lot of unanswered questions will be answered at that moment. And what, what do you hear crowd-wise? Can you hear it or can you, you know, athletes say they block it out and I don't know how much of that you can really block out. So when I fought in Connecticut, they were booing, man. <laughs> I was like, yo, are they kidding me right now? You know what I mean? And I didn't, you know, I didn't press that fight the way I wanted to press it because there's a level that goes into this with your hands. You know, my hands were still sore from the last one. I probably shouldn't have took that fight, but I wanted to make history by fighting in Connecticut. I wanted to, you know, continue to fight. And and I did that, and I should have, you know, I, I could have finished that. I could have finished that fight and could have made it a lot more entertaining, but then I would have had to take more time off. Right. You know what I right. mean? To, and now this one, I'm fully healed up, fully ready to go, and I'm going to lay it all on the line. Now, I know you don't know me very well, but that would excite me to be booed. I don't oh. want the cheers. Yeah. I, well, I don't know who, if he was booing me or booing them or booing us both. But So but we don't know that about Tyron Booze either because he was at the world title in Germany. Randy walked the belt to the ring, and the crowd was yelling, boo. They were booing us. But they don't know if it was because his name is Tyron Booze. <laughs> right. Booze, <They're like>, booze, <laughs> booze. Boo. Like, no. They, they were cheering or if it was booing. They were not cheering us when, when we went with, in there. Well, with Royal Reaver, you know that the boo isn't for Royal or Reaver. <laughs> well, well, right. Well, Uh, Ryan, I want to ask you, this is a very important topic to Matt. Uh, apparently, Tom Aspinall was dipping his hands in what? Petrol. Like, uh, oh, hands harder. I, I recently heard about that, too. I mean, if it's if it's something... If it's not illegal... I'm running it. Any yeah. any any possible yeah. edge that I could right. get. But, but I think the... Out of doing this for 20 years and trying over-the-counter supplements, other things, things to, you know, whatever it could be, the best thing that's worked for me is uh, gut health. You know what I mean? To I, I found a remedy for, um, it's key lime, organic salt, um, MCT oil, and cayenne pepper. And I do a shot of that three times a day. And when I tell you guys, I think so much sharper I operate so much sharper. I'm in the gym with way more energy. And it is 100% true what they say. You are what you eat. And, you know, you think clean eating like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to, I'll go to Chick-fil-A instead of McDonald's. All right. Yeah, it's a little bit cleaner, but there's really levels to this. And sure. when you, when you, when you really pay attention to that, and one of my favorite things to say 